Welcome back, climbers. I'm your co-host, Kaylee Floyd, and this is another episode of Climbing Mount CMMC. Today, we are going to be talking with Brian Hubbard. Brian is a certified CMMC assessor, and today we are going to talk about how an MSP can prepare for an assessment. We are so excited for you guys to join us in this episode, and we hope you enjoy. Brian, how long have you been in the industry of CMMC and compliance? Um, so from the beginning um, of CMMC, uh, for so for what's that now, three and a half years, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. But in uh, compliance and, uh, and, uh, and assessment kind of stuff, uh, 39 years. <laughs> so just a little while, right? <laughs> just a little while. So, so for those of you who may not be aware, they had provisional assessors as CMMC was getting off the ground. And Brian, you were one of those, right? Correct. Yeah, I was one of the... One of the uh, I guess in the third cadre of uh, right. provisional assessors, right. but yeah, I was a provisional assessor for a number of years. Now, no. now they've, they've got these interim assessments that are, they're called joint assessments or surveillance mm -hmm. assessments, which sounds, surveillance a little bit, assessments. Yeah, which sounds a little bit more nefarious, but what it basically is, is uh, the, they're going to do is a CMMC assessment with the, with the DIBCAC or it's a government organization uh, going through the audit. Um, and there's not a lot, of, many of those happening right now, right? So there's only been right. Like, yeah, there's only been uh, what 23, right. 24. Like how that. many of those have you participated in? Three. So I mean, that is a that's a pretty it's that's a pretty a big feather. Percentage. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> feather in your percentage. cap. Yeah. So yeah. so what we we're hoping to talk today about is about um, if you're a managed service provider providing services for uh, a company that mm -hmm. does CMMC as an assessor. We're on your radar, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. what are the things that you're kind of like, you know, danger rear Robinson that you're looking for as an assessor that you want to see that makes you feel comfortable that the MSP knows what the heck they're doing? Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, first, first off, when, when I engage with an OSC that is uh, using a, a managed service provider, it's ask how, how are they going to engage, right? How are they going to be part of the assessment? Because okay. I expect them to show up. Okay. Right? Expect them to be there. Expect to be participating in the in the right, uh, right next to right that. next to the OSC because if they're responsible for particular activities that that um, uh, help with controls, then we got to know how it's being done. So you want to, as an assessor, you want to talk to the people actually doing the work, not the people that are managing the work. Okay. Right. So you know, even you know, they can say they can tell me all day long, you know, that they have a service level agreement with an MSP to do this. Great. That's good step step one. Right. And now let's go talk to the MSP and find out how they actually do it. Gotcha. So so a common practice, right, would be patching that yeah. a managed service right. provider would provide. Right. So what is the kind of stringent questions you're gonna ask, the 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 evidence that you want to see? Mm -hmm. What would you expect an MSP like myself to present to you to make you feel comfortable that it has been considered met? Yeah, sure. So so we kind of you know start with a. You know, start at the policy level. What's what? Are, what does the organization expect? Um, how does it? How does an organization expect that to be done through their policy, mm -hmm. right? And I'd want to be maybe it's a might be at the MSP level uh, where the procedure exists, but I want to I want to see the procedure that actually implements that policy. And that's a procedure that the MSP has, right? Not it, or is it? The well, client? I mean, it should be it should be uh, collaborative between okay. the right. between the client and the, and the MSP on on uh, the procedure, so they should have it in their documentation about how this is getting done Gotcha. Um, as well. So, it, you know, because that's where all the evidence has come from. I'm not going to the MSP and asking them for additional evidence that the, that the OSC hasn't. I'm going to ask the OSC, uh, we need uh -huh. this kind of evidence. Okay. I don't care where you get it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have to go to your MSP to get it, great. Go to your MSP and get it. And, and then um, you want to see proof of... Proof of it actually being, being done. done, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah, we want to see... Um, you know, if, you know, um, forget what example you just gave me, but we're patching, so. patching. Yeah. yeah. So, so if, if we want to see the, you know, what's the policy around patching, you know, and fixing uh, flaws in the system, and, and um, uh, what's the cadence that that's done on? How you know what's the frequency? And then I'm going to want to know from the person actually doing it, the MSP in this case, 
uh, when they want to know, okay, great, um, show me records of how it's done. Are there tickets produced to say this has to get take place? Or, mm-hmm. Is there an approval process? Mm-hmm. Because before I do this patch, I need to get the following approvals. Right. Are there records of that actually being done? That's a sticking point for a lot of MSPs because typically sure. what they like to do is they've got lots of different clients that they're mm-hmm. supporting yeah. and they want to just turn it loose and say, I'm going to auto approve all of these certain categories. But that doesn't necessarily check the box and can kind of get you in yeah. some he- uh, dangerous waters yeah. when it comes to assessment. Yeah, so it's it's all about change, uh-huh. change management, right? So so configuration management, change management is huge in in CMMC. It's because you know, you want to understand, you know, we're we're assessing a point in time system, mm-hmm. right? So we're assessing a basically a, what would become a baseline, if you will, right? And then we want to see if anything moves from that baseline. Okay, was it controlled? Was is it still right. secure? Is it so still in pick, secure state? Approving a patch would be an example. Okay, of that. A very good example of that. So, yeah. So you want to yeah. see that there's some type of approval process, and and it's just not like release the dogs and kind of see how it plays out. Right. Right. We're not just coming back, you know, a year later or something, and saying, well, now what's the system look like? Right. Right. We're gonna say, okay, well, we know what it looked like a year ago. How did it get to where it is today? Gotcha. Right. So so in those types of situations where you're looking at that. That that has to be performed by a tool, right? For most people. For and, most people, yeah. Yeah. So so I mean they're not doing it manually, efficiently. <laughs> right? Efficiently. So, not, yeah. so you've got to use some type of tool. And this sort of opens the door uh, for some drama when it yeah. comes to the assessment, is like what tool are you using and where does that tool exist? Exactly. Can, you, can that, you speak to that? Yeah, so in in, in CMMC parlay, that would be a, a Security protection asset. Okay. Right. Um, so we we would want to know uh, how is that security protection asset because it's in scope, mm-hmm. right? Of the, of the OSC's <clears throat> assessment. Um, so how is that being managed? What are what are the the uh, controls around it? Um, does it have you know its own user accounts? Does it have uh, does it log? Right. Mm-hmm. Do 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 you actually have logs from that? And and or if they do, great. Are they going into the audit analysis the sim if you use the sim hopefully um or right. whatever right. um so in that situation you, you you sort of have a strategy of what's inside scope of the assessment because right. the client that you're providing the assessment to they may have you know a thousand people but only 50 of them and some of those appropriate assets may be in the actual scope of what you're trying to do your assessment. Yeah, and that's pretty <laughs> typical, yeah. And so in that situation, the MSP is going to have tools that are on that, um, and patching tool would be one of them, but mm-hmm. many of these tools do a lot of other things besides just patching. And what are concerns that you typically want to feel uh, addressed Right when they're using those types of tools. Well, yeah, I want to see want to see first of all that the, there's no avenue of exfiltrating data mm-hmm. you know, from the let's just call it the enclave, the mm-hmm. CUI enclave to the rest of the enterprise or back to the gotcha. back to the MSP. Right, mm-hmm. make sure that the tool is known well enough to be well behaved um, mm-hmm. and uh, work as as it's designed. Gotcha. And and so in that situation, if the potential for exfilling or, or, or extracting data off of that mm-hmm. machine could happen uh, with that tool, what kind of information would you want to have to make you feel comfortable that that tool could be utilized? Yeah, well, that's a that's a great question, and it, it it's um, probably going to vary a lot. But we want to we want to at least know how it's being configured and be able to see the configuration of it to make sure that. Um, if there are settings that you know, would would allow you to do certain things, um, extra mm-hmm. things, you know, mm-hmm. right? Extra ad- added value, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> that the, the extra added value isn't going to cause a security problem right. if it's if it's configured in, uh, and make sure that those settings are correct. And you know, and if it happens to be a, a cloud based tool, uh, well, you know, depending on which way the DoD goes, and we'll know. Here in a few months, I hope. Right. Yeah. Um, which way the DoD goes on that? It may need to be a a, a Fed ramp tool. approved tool, which is a massive deal. It's a huge deal, and and so, um, you know that'll 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 um cause a lot of consternation depending right. on which way they go. Obviously. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think the the determining factor is is transparency, right? The the Correct. tool needs to be transparent about what it's doing, right? And right now. 
in the industry, there isn't a lot of that. Right. So there's not a lot of information that, that the that the tool is sharing with who's buying and utilizing it about what they're exactly doing as far as what data they're collecting yeah. and where it's going. Yeah, there's been a, been a lot, you know, there's a there's there's kind of a lot of that, right? And and that's what um, gave us some challenges a few years ago with, with you know with the solar winds and mm -hmm. things like that. There's because there's um, code uh, in those mm -hmm. systems. There's functionality in those systems that may not be desirable. Right. 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 Um, and there's no way in a, in one of these uh, CMMC assessments to really get at the root of that. Right. We're not we're not going to go into the tool and do code level analysis to make sure that it's not doing anything right, that shouldn't. Right. We just can't can't do that. Right? And that, I guess that's, that's where not. that Fed ramp starts to make sense for people because that gives them that level of comfort that at least something along those lines. There's some can. kind of a deeper inspection. I mean, even Fed ramp isn't going to go that that deep, but but uh, there's some kind of a understanding. Right. Of it. Yeah. So <clears throat> it seems like in in that situation that you want to see the MSP has understands that challenge of the tools that they're utilizing and that they can bring to the table when they're talking with you um, a good understanding of what they're they're needing to provide to you. Right, right. Um, so you know, can yeah, you talk yeah, about that? Yeah, I mean, so, so um, it's never okay for an OSC to just say, well, that's not our job. That's the, OS, that's the MSP's job. Mm -hmm. Well, great, but it is your responsibility. You're at the, right. one of the top levels. So the same could be true, said to be true of the MSP, right? When the MSP is using a tool set, um, it's not okay to just say, well, that's ConnectWise's right. job, or that's Kaseya's job, or that's, you know, SolarWinds job, or, right. you know, no, it's your job to understand it right. and present that evidence, right? Because the assessor isn't going to go, you know, much like the OSC to the mm -hmm. MSP, right? Mm -hmm. the, it's the MSP's, it's the OSC's job to get the MSP there, right? right? It's your job to get the tools, tools right. information. Flows down, right? It, it, it's, it's all built up. The, the, the assessor is not going to go um, searching and doing, you know, deep research uh, to find out something that, they should be being presented as evidence. Gotcha. So you, right? you got to be ready to to present that. Exactly. What would um, what do you think? Let's just say for maybe a fifty system environment, like what would an MSP expect their involvement in that assessment participation? Like how much of your assessment of that organization in time, like in days, and what kind of information would you expect them to bring to the table to make it? even successful. Does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, I mean, so I, I don't think the size matters. Okay. Right? Um, so whether it's a, a one one person shop you're supporting or whether it's a hundred person shop you're supporting, um, it's probably going to be the same same level. You're probably going to, you know, those hundred, hundred uh, endpoints you're supporting are probably going to be configured somewhat similar. Okay. Right? Uh, so we're going to want to know for everything you're doing, you're going to need to bring the right uh, people and the in the processes and the and the and the evidence to support how you're supporting that particular control. Right. Right. Um, so it doesn't really matter necessarily the the size of the organization, but it's just all all of the evidence has to be presented. Gotcha. So so they you might and, and for those that may not know the OSC stands for organization seeking oh, yeah, uh, certification. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, the. So in that situation, uh, you know, maybe there might be a three or four day period. Uh, and in those three or four days, the MSP needs to be either remotely accessible through camera and, right. and Teams chat or physically right. on site for you to address right. all the technical controls that they're involved in exactly. and appropriately exactly. speak to how they're completing it, right? Yep, okay. absolutely. So now that's a big challenge for MSPs to start to wrap their heads around because some of the MSPs already have clients that do work in the what's called the DIB, so mm -hmm. defense industry base. Uh, and in that situation, uh, they may have clients that when they when they realize that the CMMC uh, you know starter pistol has been fired, they're going to get pulled into this mm -hmm. and they need to be prepared. Uh, you created or you're starting an organization that is trying to help educate MSPs. Right. Um, and and uh, can you talk a little bit more about like what that's about? And, and yeah, I would love to. Um, 
So yeah, it's called the, the MSP uh, Cybersecurity Exchange, mm -hmm. or MSP CyberX for short. Um, we'll probably be going live with that um, near the end of this calendar year or the very early in January um, of 2024. But um, yeah, the idea of that is to kind of build this community to work with MSPs and, and help, help you know, MSPs as a collective, you know, kind of understand the controls and understand how to how to approach uh, cybersecurity, not just for CMMC, but uh, you know, certainly the focus of that will be initially on CMMC, but then other regulatory issues because your customers have all kinds of regulatory right. issues, and and they're, that, that's just going to continue to increase. Right, right. We're seeing uh, all these new new uh, regulations coming out from. Uh, SEC from the FTC, you know, you name it, all the acronym soup of uh, government governments. Everybody's coming out with cybersecurity regulations because it's such a huge problem. So um, we need to be able to tackle that and tackle that in a smart way, right? Um, and and it makes sense to um, uh, kind of uh, do that as a collective group, you know, as a as a, as a team, right? right. Uh, and um, and uh, and share best practices and things like that. So, so we're going to have not only have our finger on the pulse of those regulations, but also uh, be working towards um, solutions, workshopping, right. you know, things. Have we run workshops and in and peer groups and things to work through some of the challenges. Well, that makes mm -hmm. sense because um, so many times I think MSPs think that problems are solved by tools. Um, CMMC is not like that. It's a it's a people and knowledge solution. Yeah, cybersecurity um, in general is, yeah. is you know, people, you get, process, and technology. Right. So, you know, there's first two, the technologies at the end. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So if you if you don't have your people and processes, people and processes in the in 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 the right uh, right mode, um, you you're you're not going to ever win. Right. right. I mean, it's it's always going to be a problem. You can have the best technology on the face of the planet. And you know somebody does something stupid. Well, I think also having that collabor collaborization, collabor man, yeah, collaboration, yeah, collaboration. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, having that is critical because even like in other industries, not all MSPs are equal, right? right. So my MSP, we're one hundred percent remote. We don't have a physical yeah. location. Yeah. Uh, so if you get to do an assessment, that creates its own little unique challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, but other organizations may have multiple offices. They right. may have uh, different departments or things like that. So having collaboration amongst your peers uh, focused on the challenges of CMMC could be really helpful. Exactly. And, and, and of course, you know, there's a wide berth of, of services, you know, uh, that is that are being offered, right? I mean, some some are housing the client's data. Right, right. Some are, some are just supporting, some are staff augmentation, basically of the, oh, of the true, IT yeah. team, right. right? The co-managed kind of thing as well. So all those challenges um, are different, you know, present different challenges, but you know, what we need to understand too, and one of the things that, that we're gonna be working on in this group is um, how do you characterize your services? What, what, what does, how do you support your client in their assessment? Mm -hmm. So what what do you need to bring to the table, kind of like what you're asking, right? And work through that for every one of those, you know, the service packages, right? You know, and see what what would I need to bring to the table in order to uh, to help the client, and then how do I get that sort of, you know, hopefully down down the road we'll be able to sort of get that endorsed or get that assessed or you know some, mm -hmm. something independently so there'll be independent packages. Because you really, as an MSP, have two very difficult challenges. The number one, it appears that the ruling is going to come down that we're going to have to get level two, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what um, it's looking like. So yeah. we need to figure out how do we, as an MSP, pass that, right? right. Uh, but that's only one side of the coin. That's the other side, side exactly is then right. how do we participate in other clients' assessments and leverage that certificate that we have just now gotten. Yeah, That's exactly. A, that exactly. That yeah, it's not it's been blueprinted out by not, any stretch. Not at all. And, and and you know that's what I talk about is sort of you know two two prongs of the fork, if you will. Uh, you know, hopefully, it's not a very sharp one that will poke you in the <laughs> eye. But it's but it, you know you have the uh, challenge of yeah getting getting yourself and sort of walking the walk, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, getting yourself certified and and having the structure there so so that you know that. Your your client will know that any of their data that happens to get in there into your environment is protected appropriately. Right, right. And then on the other side, that really has no impact whatsoever. Your assessment 
really has no impact on their assessment at all. Right, right. Unless you're translating that into the services right. you're providing. And that, that some of that's not 100% clear about how that's going to flow out. So the ruling right. will have to make, hopefully, right. that a little bit more evident. But yeah, that, I mean, there's some things that are, I don't, I don't want to characterize this common sense. It's, there's, <laughs> there's because um, it's not common at all sense, um, but, it, but there's um, history. Mm-hmm. Of how that's been done in the past, and that's gotcha. you know so um, way back in the eighties, we we actually had something called the trusted network interpretation. This is mm-hmm. of, of, a, of another standard that I won't even get into all the acronym soup around that one, but um, that talked about how systems have to be composed. So so no one component or no one service can meet all the controls. Right, you're composing an environment. You know, I don't say system. I say you're mm-hmm. composing an environment that includes a system, it includes people, it includes right. processes, right. And that that has to be collectively has to be has to be compliant. Right. Correct. Collectively assessed and, and, right. and compliant. Right. And, and and the you know all of that has to come together. Yeah. So so a, a, in my opinion, a sensible solution will emerge. Right. <laughs> so we hope. <laughs> so we hope. So well, we hope. Brian, thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. And for those of you who may not be aware, we're coming live to you. Well, I guess when you're watching it, probably not live, but uh, (laughs) from the CS2 conference in Denver. Uh, Summit 7 was gracious enough to host such a great event. The speakers have been great. Uh, We had a a great time attending it. Um, And so special shout out to Summit 7 for putting on such a great event. Make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube to stay up to date on the latest CMMC news. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and listen out for the next one. But until then, keep on climbing.